alumni, graduated in 1998, yada, yada, yada. I have a ministry called We Are or Sons of the Living God Ministry, Issues of or an Addictions Ministry for Men or Women. I deal with issues and I deal with addictions. I do not believe in calling you an addict or an alcoholic or any label. I say that's your condition, but that's not your identity. Amen? If you're born again, your identity is in Jesus Christ. You're saved, blessed, victorious. Amen? All these things he calls you. But do never call yourself an addict. Your condition is addiction, but your your identity is not saved. Amen? So if I call you an addict, tell me the devil is alive. Amen? I may have had that problem, but I'm not referred to that. All right? Um, so I deal with root issues. I try to pull them up from the ground. I've been where you've been. Okay? So I can identify. And I'm very bold about these guys. I tell you, they finally got to meet me. And they know I, I say some some stuff. <laughs> but I guess I'm not that raunchy. What about you, man? Right? Y'all think I'm raunchy? No, nah, you're right. Hey, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I just like keeping it real. I preach the way I want to be preached to. Amen? That's the way it is. Okay? And you're not going to get that in most churches. And that's probably why God didn't got me out of church. But it's, <laughs> that's why I stay in the street because I feel the folk. But what I want to talk about today, we're going to... I am now connected with a ministry or trying to get connected totally with a ministry called um, ministrywatch.org. And what they do is they watch for these ministries who are stealing the tithe and the offering, who are not taking the money from the people of God, the sheep for and using it in a proper manner of feeding the hungry, feeding those who are sick, and helping those who are destitute. You know, our country's in a terrible strait. But yet, they're riding around in Mercedes, business, business, big old houses, uh, Rolex, and $16,000 dogs, and all that crap. Donnie McCurkin finally stood up and said it. Everybody know who Donnie McCurkin is, right? Great, one of the great gospel singers. Fakes millions. But he's a pastor. But guess where he lives? In his own neighborhood, where he pastors. Doesn't take a salary. So he wrote and said, stop robbing the church. So we're not doing this to hurt the pastors or nobody. We're just saying we love you enough to bring you to accountability. Stop ripping off the church. Stop ripping off the church. And they make people who have been through addictions, like us, people who have homosexual problems, people who have mental illness problems, all the destitute people, they raise them up as an example of to be afraid of you. All right? And that's not right. So there's some prejudices in the church. It don't matter whether you're white, black, Hispanic. It don't matter. Drugs don't have a color, do it. So my mind was going to say, why, why, why is this going on? You know? You, you, you're you okay with the guy who's committing adultery because he don't get high. But the addict, you don't believe. You reveal the addict and say, well, he's a drug addict. Y'all better be careful with him. But the guy, because he paid tithes, who has a sexual addiction, you don't reveal him because he's elder so-and-so. And he's sleeping with all the women in the church for a couple of wives, but we're going to keep that quiet. But the guy who's an addict, when you pop up, you know he used to get high. Forget he just got saved. Amen? He got a new identity too. Okay? Forget that guy who is homo. Oh man, he's a gay guy. And most guys who are homophobic, if you're heterosexual and you're homophobic, you got the problem. Are you more afraid that you might sleep with him? Because he ain't thinking about you. Alright? Gay people only know gay people. So if you know somebody gay, remember, don't be angry with them. They ain't thinking about you. If they make a passage, you just tell them, I ain't about that. Okay? They leave you alone. They got prejudice and the problems of their own. So does God hate the homosexual? Let me ask you something. Let me ask you this right now. How many times did y'all hear Jesus speak about a gay guy? Never! Y'all hear me talking, gentlemen? How many times have you heard Jesus speak about homosexuality? Never! Paul brought it up, but you never heard Jesus talk about it. So why are you? Yeah. When we move from law into grace, which is grace, everybody's forgiven. Hate the sin, but love the person. They hate you more than that homosexual because you are an addict in their mind. They'd rather have the addict around them, I mean a homosexual around them than to have a drug addict. You are the worst of the worst of the worst. Amen? They can't trust you. They hate to see you coming. They say, oh, oh, here, what does he need now? Come on. Are y'all feeling me here? So how can you disrespect somebody and they disrespect you more than him or her? Think about that for a minute. They actually, they ain't telling you, but they actually going like this. Yeah, right. They ain't telling you, but they actually say it. <laughs> Amen? And I'm not talking about you people. I'm talking about your own family members. I'm talking about your wife. I'm talking about your mother. I'm talking about your sister. I'm talking about your kids. Don't trust daddy. Don't 
don't trust my brother. Oh, my son, I love him, but he a mess. You better not trust him. And here you are saying to yourself, I've been working for my, I was a functioning at I worked every day. I made over forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. I got a degree in electronic engineering. I was making my money paying the bills. But they still didn't trust me. I ain't stole from nobody. The only person I stole from was me. But they still didn't trust me. Because I stole my own stuff. <laughs> ain't that pathetic? My wife just said, why are you pulling in your diamond rings and necklaces? I said, what you want me to point yours? <laughs> I don't touch your stuff. That's mine. I'll get it out next paycheck. But right now, I want to smoke. <laughs> so we'll be happy I didn't touch yours. But you're hurting me. Now, I still came to the realization, ah, anytime you do that, you're still hurting them. But that was my selfishness. You know, that was my, well, you want to move from stealing yours to stealing mine. You're probably right. Especially if I lose my job. And sooner or later, I did find her necklace and her ring, and I did pawn them. Because I looked at it and said, I paid for it. <laughs> Amen. See, I'm keeping it real. Amen. But my question in my mind is just been, why, why, why? All right? So ask yourself. And the guy gave that to me, said, write down why, why, why. And I'm like, God, why, why, why? I never found a why, why, why in the Bible. Anybody ever seen why, why, why in the Bible? I never saw that. Why, why, why? 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 Go, why? why? Go with me to Matthew chapter 25. All right? Everybody with me. Woo, just watch. Come on now. Quiet. Quiet. Let's see if God, let's see if y'all get it the same way God gave it to me. Because I was tripping at home, man. I'm writing this sermon and I'm tripping. Because I ain't never seen nothing like this. But the way God puts things together in your spirit, it comes out that way. Amen. But let's see how many times Jesus said, Why, 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 why? Amen. Matthew 25. Starting at verse 35. Matthew 25. Starting at verse 35. Okay. Here we go. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you looked me, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. And I was sick, and you visited me. And I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Truly or verily I say unto you, in as much as you have done it unto one of these, of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. There's your answer to prayer. Then, verse 41, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you curse, into everlasting what? Fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was a hunger and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. Mm. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger or a thirst and a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto you? Then shall he answer and then shall he answer them saying, Verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to the one of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Why did I bring 